right, welcome back fellow Airbus captains. Today, in episode 2 of the pilot series, we're going to take the TOLUS 319 out and we are going to operate the aircraft without an APU. So some of you may be wondering, well, why would you fly the airplane without an APU? And sometimes it's just part of the deal. You know, these things break, uh, they, you know, maybe a, maybe a low oil or something like that, and the APU has been deferred, so we can't use it. So if we can't use the APU, it really doesn't affect the safety of the airplane at all. It just imparts more workload on the flight crew. And you'll typically get this on go home day or the last leg of a trip. You'll swap into an airplane that has a deferred APU. So now it's going to slow you down and you will not be home in time for dinner. Hopefully that's not the case, though, if you've trained for it and you're ready to go. So I'm going to show you guys how to operate uh, your airplane without an APU. We're going to use ground air at the gate to start the engine. And then we're also going to do a cross bleed start using real world procedures and that way you guys will have an idea of how to do it if you want to. I encourage it. I mean, sometimes flying in the flight sim world, it gets a little bit mundane. We just push back from the gate and start switch, boom, start the engine. So hopefully after this video, maybe you'll, on your next flight, you'll take it out and, hey, I'm going to pretend that the APU is not working. Or you could probably even go through the uh, failure system and defer uh, your APU. I have not tried that, though. I don't know if it works. We're just going to pretend that it's deferred, and we're going to go work through it right now. So right now I'm sitting in Phoenix Sky Harbor. The aircraft has been pre-flighted. The doors are closed. There should be a jet bridge here at this gate. There is not. Um, and we're going to head on down to San Diego. So everything goes as normal. You do your normal pre-flight, you load your box, everything is good to go. The one thing that is going to be a little bit different is we are not going to disconnect the external ground power. We need external power until we get an engine running. Once our engine is running, then we can go ahead and disconnect the external power, push back from the gate, and do a cross bleed start. We need at least one generator running, so let's go ahead and get that fired up. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the TOLUS ISCS screen here, aircraft, we want to say ground services, and what I want to do is turn on high pressure air. Now what should happen is we're going to go ahead and pretend that we are ready for start right now. So let me fix my top altitude to 15,000, everything else is good. Turn the beacon light on, run the B4 start checklist, and then we have to ask ground or the ramp, hey, we need to start an engine here at the gate. Is that approved? They'll say engine start approved. So let's go ahead and do that. So engine start with external pneumatic power. Before connecting the external pneumatic power, what we need to do is turn pack one and two off. This is to ensure that no contamination will get into the aircraft ventilation system. So in real life, when we do a ground air start, there is a little cart that they wheel out and they will typically park it right in front of the number one engine so the cord can feed to the high pressure inlet area which is uh, under the fuselage here and we'll start the engine. Now if they put the cart in front of the number one engine we always start number two. So this is one of those rear, weird instances where we are going to start the second engine first and we want to make sure that the packs are off so we don't get any contamination, like I said. Those carts that they use to pump the high-pressure air in have been sitting a long time. There's microbes and dust mites and all kinds of nasty stuff that you don't want to breathe in. So, packs off. Before engine start, APU bleed off. Engine bleeds, both engines off. Engine bleeds off. Cross bleed open. So we'll go ahead and open the cross bleed valve to the open position. This will allow the air to go from the high pressure inlet fairing on the, on the outside of the aircraft to the number two bleed or number one. It will just help pressurize the system. If we have this in auto, it'll be closed and we'll only get pressure to the number one. But we want to start number two, so this is why we got to open this cross bleed valve here. All right, after this, it's going to be a normal start procedure. So we'll go over here, engine one to ignition start, and I'll say 
a ground we're ready for ground air go ahead and connect it I'll say okay connecting ground air boom and we have instant pressure I'd like to really see that struggle a lot of times when you go to these external air carts they don't they're used and they're wore out and sometimes they don't really quite get enough pressure um, we're sitting at 28 that should be sufficient go ahead and start engine number two Alright, looks like we are getting a good start on engine number two. There it is. We'll reset the timer. Air bleed two off, that's associated. Clear the caution, clear the status. Now, what we need to do is request removal from the external air cart before we go ahead and turn our packs back on. So, what we'll do is we'll go back to our ISCS. Please remove the ground air. A ground air has been removed. Once we verify that the ground air has been removed, we'll go ahead and continue with the procedure. Packs one and two on. Engine two bleed on. We're gonna to wanna to keep engine two bleed on because we only have engine two started right now. So we wanna cool the cabin or warm the cabin. We're gonna do it off of engine two. And then we would have to do a cross bleed start procedure after we taxi off from the gate. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this uh, back into auto. And then we can go ahead and request removal of the external ground power. Now, one thing you always wanna make sure to do is come back here, check your electrics, make sure that your generator is working, which this is interesting. So, yeah, there we go. It is working. I was just confused by this line right here. That's the external power. Generator 2 is on and working. So we can go ahead and disconnect. And now you can see that generator 2 has picked up the load to AC bus 1 and is powering this, this uh, engine 1 side of the electrical system. All right, so the normal after start procedure applies. We can go ahead and turn that off and push back from the gate. All right, so now after our uh, procedure has been completed, we are waiting for the pushback now. And you can tell everything is still okay, running. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. He's gonna go ahead and connect. Hopefully they're already connected before you do the uh, procedure, typically at the gate, but I'll be ready to go Hey, let's fire up the air cart. Boom, they fire it up. Start the engine, remove the air cart and ground power, and then we push back from the gate. Because if it's real hot in the summertime and you're running there with just that one engine, sometimes it can get a little bit toasty up front, especially because engine two, that cools the forward and aft cabin. So pack one, goes directly to the cockpit. Pack 2 goes to the forward and aft cabin. So it can get a little toasty up front for sure. Tow connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Brakes released. Clear to push. Starting pushback. All right, we've been pushed back from the gate. Our after start checklist is complete for now. We are single engine taxiing. We'll go ahead and release the brake. Now in this instance, because we don't have the yellow electric hydraulic pump on, we are going to get that PTU sound in the back. You can kind of hear it right now. That's because the green system is being supplied by the PTU right now. So when you go to the aft cabin, you can hear that PTU running. And there's just nothing we can do about that right now. So that's just the name of the game when you have to go out on engine number two. Now as we taxi out, 
we always want to ask ground control for permission to do a cross bleed start. The Airbus in particular, not very hard, but the older engines like the MD-80 engines or the jt d engines, you really had to bump up the thrust on the operating engine to get sufficient bleed pressure. With the Airbus, it's really not, uh, not that much of a, of a big deal, but we go ahead and do it anyway just in case there's a little Cessna or something sitting behind us. So when we get out here on the taxiway, we'll go ahead and do the cross bleed start. Alright, when we're on the taxiway, we'll go ahead and do our cross bleed start procedure. I'm going to just stop the airplane. In real life, we would just keep on taxiing. We've got two people to do it. But just because it's me, I'm going to stop the aircraft. Alright, for the cross bleed start, we need to take bleed pressure from the operating engine number two and move it over to the left side, engine number one, so we can get sufficient start pressure. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the overhead here. We're going to make sure the APU bleed is off, which it is. The engine bleed supplying engine must be on, which it is. The engine bleed on the receiving engine needs to stay off. And you can see we left that off from our uh, start procedure at the gate. So that's staying off right now. That is good. The reason we want this to be off is because the bleed valve on the receiving engine needs to be closed to avoid reversed, reverse flow leakage. So if this was open, um, sometimes you can get reverse flow and lose pressure. So you don't want that. You want to make sure that bleed is off. Cross bleed, we're going to go ahead and open that. So now we're going to get bleed pressure from engine two straight over to number one. The valve is closed, so all that pressure is going right into pack one, or I'm sorry, not pack one, right into engine one, and sit ready for start. When the area is clear of obstacles, we want to make sure that the aircraft is not going to harm anything, no baggage car trying to behind us. We're going to move the thrust lever for the supplying engine to obtain at least a minimum of 30 psi before start and a minimum of 25 during the start sequence. Typically that's right around 40% and 1. So we'll go ahead and move that to ignition start. And you can tell at idle I'm getting 44 PSI over to uh, engine 1. That is not really accurate, especially at idle thrust. A lot of times you got to go up to about 40% N1 to get more bleed pressure. Right about there. So we'll go ahead and just simulate it. We'll keep it there at 40%. And then engine one to start. Start the timer. A lot of times you'll see this number drop down after you've increased the start and that valve opens and all the pressure rushes in. That's why you have that limitation there. 30 PSI before start and at least 25 during the start. All right, looks like we have a good start on engine number one. Bring it back to idle. Whoa, not reverse. Hold on. Don't want to do that, but Air bleed one off, that is associated. So we'll go ahead and put this back into normal. Back to the overhead. Cross bleed, move it right back to the auto position. Engine bleed, receiving engine. We can go ahead and turn that back on. And pack one and pack two are on, which they are. That will take care of the cross bleed start procedure. So we've completely left the gate without an APU, started one engine there, and then our second engine on the taxiway. So I hope that uh, helps. I know it seems kind of, might seem like a lot right away there, but if you practice it, you'll be able to do it in no time, and you can go ahead and fly your aircraft without an APU. Save gas if you want to. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll catch you on the next video real soon. Have a good one. Happy New Year.